And while America celebrates its Independence Day, Egypt has reached another breaking point in its struggle for democracy. The country's first freely elected president has been overthrown by the military after only one year in office. Morsi's ouster was triggered by the same kind of popular uprising that first brought him to power. The military suspended the Constitution and is calling for new elections. Morsi denounced the move as a full military coup. But the armed forces say it's just a temporary transition. This leaves the country divided, facing an uncertain future. So joining us this morning is Professor Alain Ben-Mir, Senior Fellow at the NYU SCPS Center for Global Affairs. Professor, thanks for joining us again this morning. Thank you. My pleasure. My so pleasure. as promised, we talked about this yesterday. Things have unfolded the way the military promised. They have taken over. Um, and, you know, standing from where we are over here with a long history of democracy, we see the first freely elected president, not even given a year before he is pushed out. We see the military almost sort of acting independently, um, no, no sort of oversight. What are we to think of this fledgling democracy, this new Egypt? Well, two things we have to keep in mind. The Egyptian military has always maintained their independence. Uh, and they've been considered themselves and being considered by the public as the ultimate custodian that protect e Egypt from um, uh, outside uh, enemies as well as internal uh, radicals. Mm -hmm. As far as the democracy is concerned in Egypt, we have to keep in mind that the Muslim Brotherhood run uh, for in, in this last, the, the election, last election, when in fact no other party has given any opportunity to organize themselves politically to, in, in order to provide an alternative to the Brotherhood. That's mm -hmm. number one. Moreover, Whereas the, the President Morsi should have focused on economic development, providing more opportunities, more job, his focus was to consolidate his power mm. and appointing just about everyone in the government that has a strong affiliation to the Muslim Brotherhood. Mm. So from the public perspective, they basically replaced one dictator, Mubarak, with another dictator. Mm -hmm. And that is where this whole the breakdown in the system comes. So democracy in and of itself does not guarantee anything. That is, election will not guarantee anything. Right. You need how to translate election into a practical steps from which the public can benefit. Which is true democracy. Is democracy possible, in your opinion, in Egypt? Well, it is possible, but the, our problem in the West is we think that this is like a panacea. They, if they swallow it, they're going to wake up in the morning free and everything is going to be fine. Mm -hmm. Democracy is a long, long process. We forget how many decades, if not centuries, it took us in order to get to the point where we are today. Right. But remember, there was no tradition of democratic form of government in Egypt or if in any of the Arab right. states. So that required time. I would suggest to the, if the, the General Sisi is listening to me today, I will say to him, do not rush for another election. Allow for a transitional government representative of all the Egyptian people mm -hmm. to operate for at least three, four years mm -hmm. and focus on economic development, allow other parties to develop their own platform and then go for an election and then rewrite the constitution. So let's talk about that a little bit. You know, the military says this is a temporary measure. Elections will be held, but no timeline has been revealed at this point. You say three or four years, which I feel like is a long time. I mean, that's the term of uh, an elected official. And but Morsi still has a lot of supporters and there is a concern that perhaps what the military is doing is precisely what they accuse Morsi of doing, which is ignoring the desires of groups that don't agree with them. Um, should we feel comfortable with the military in charge for, like you say, your suggestion, three, four years? Well, the truth of the matter is you know, if the military appoints a civilian government, this is what really what they're planning to do. Mm -hmm. And this made out of representative, you know, uh, people who are professionals mm. do not necessarily need to belong to any specific party for that matter. And they can sit down and look at the plight of the, the, the problem that Egypt is facing today, which is insurmountable to, mm. to and begin to deal with it. And not concern ourselves right now with, with another free election. Free election, yes, the person will wake up in the morning and feel free, mm -hmm. but he does not have the food to eat, mm -hmm. does not have the opportunity, does not have the health care, mm -hmm. cannot send their kids to school. 
and they are going to see a repeat of all of that. They're going to be uh, back, well, in the back in the streets again. Back in the streets again, which means for us not to avoid a repeat of this, we've got to allow the process, democratic process, to evolve, to evolve naturally rather than superimpose our will uh, yeah. or our, our values in terms of what democracy is all about. Let's talk about uh, President Obama ordering the U.S. government to take a look at what exactly happened here with the military. There's this debate now. Was it a coup? Was it not a coup? And a lot of money hangs in the balance because if it was a military coup, I think it's $1.6 billion that uh, the U.S. provides to Egypt. Legally, they're obligated to, to keep that money. Um, what sort of effect would losing that, you know, let's go back actually, instead of that, what's your take on this? Is this a coup or is this not a coup? Well, honestly, uh, what does this really, what difference does it make? Mm -hmm. For all intent and purposes, today the army is in charge. It is a coup if the supreme leader, the supreme, like the, the, the current defense minister who is the General Sisi who is in charge, mm -hmm. will become the ultimate authority and does not allow for a civilian government to govern, mm -hmm. then you would say this is, by definition, will be a coup. Whereas if they basically remove the current president and, and, and install or in a civilian government, right. representative of all the people, and they just step aside only to make sure that this government functions properly and begin to meet the aspiration of the Egyptian people, mm -hmm. then that is not a coup. Okay. And I think this is where they are leaning toward because uh, for many reasons, including the continuing support of the United States. And we will all be watching closely for sure. Professor Alain Ben-Mir, thanks for joining us again this morning. Thank you. My pleasure. Anytime.